Today we'll be creating a beam mesh, assign a cross section to the mesh, then orient and offset it to the correct location. Here I have some geometry that we'll be using to create a beam mesh on. We'll create our simulation files in the SimCenter Nastrian solver environment and we'll create a linear static solution. Next we'll create a beam mesh and the type that we'll create will be a C beam and I'm going to select some geometry on the edge and I'm being careful to select it on one end of the edge and what you'll notice is that you'll get an arrow that's going to let you know what direction the element coordinate system will be for that C beam mesh. Next we'll assign an element size here's our C beam type that we'll select and we'll create some physical properties in the mesh collector before we complete the mesh creation and first I'm going to create a P beam L type property we'll inherit the material from the geometry then we'll define a section and here we have a number of standard section types and there is a T which we can then assign dimensions. Here we have a dimension 1 across the base, dimension 2 which is the bottom of the T there or actually the top of it and here you can see the orientation is flipped. It's also a little bit difficult to see the coordinate system that it's referencing because it's in yellow against a white background so let's change that to a dark background and you can see that we have the Y and Z axis of the cross-section shown in the preview. Alright, so that looks good, except that it's going to be upside down based on the Y direction of our global coordinate system, which it will try to align our Y coordinate system for our beam mesh. And to see that better, let's go ahead and edit the display to turn on the section orientation so that we can see those coordinate systems as well as a solid representation of the beam. So here you can see the element coordinate system for each of the elements and the x-axis going in the same direction as the arrow was pointing when we selected the geometry. Now let's fix the orientation. You can see it's upside down so let's flip the y-axis and now it's oriented correctly but it's not in the correct position exactly. To do that we'll use a graphical offset and in the cross-section preview you can see that element coordinate system the Y and Z axis. We want to align that preview Y and Z axis to the Y and Z axis on our element coordinate system in the graphic screen. So that looks good. Now we'll pick a reference location on the cross section and you'll see that highlighted right there and then we'll pick the corresponding point on our geometry in order to correctly offset that beam physical property. So that looks good. Next we'll try a general section and we'll create a beam mesh selecting some of the geometry on it and I like to select it as close to the shear center as possible or the center of gravity of the cross section that will help minimize the offset and we'll create a new physical property here we'll be selecting a P beam type physical property and the reason why is because we'll be getting some different options in the section type and the one we want is face of solid that will really simplify defining the cross-section of this beam. All I need to do is select that face and it's defined the property. We also need to select a horizontal direction to orient our cross-section which we'll specify as being in the X direction and then we can preview the section. And here you can see highlighted in red the stress recovery points. We've got a C, D, E, and F Let's say we don't like where E has shown up. We can move that point to wherever we want on the section. 
and that will give us the stress at that location. All right, so that looks good. Now, next what we'll do after we create the, the beam mesh is we need to orient this one as well. So to do that, let's turn on the solid representation of the beam and the section orientation of the elements. And we'll see again that x-axis is going in the direction that we had specified for the sense of our mesh. And here we don't need to flip the element axis. It looks like it's aligned correctly. It's just not offset correctly. So let's go ahead and make sure that our cross-section preview CSIS is aligned with our graphic screen so that when we pick our points to graphically offset the cross-section that we'll be able to pick points on the geometry where we understand the offset to be. So that looks good. All right, now let's take a look at the difference between a P-beam and a P-beam L. And really the only difference is when you go to solve the way that the card gets written out to Nastri. And here you can see the dimensions for the P-beam that we had defined as eight, six, and a quarter, and a quarter for dimensions one, two, three, and four. So that's easy to read and easy to understand that we've got the values correct there. But with a P-beam, this is more general. So you don't have those dimensions. What you have is an area and moment of inertia and also products of inertia, the various physical properties that define the cross-section in general terms. All right, next we'll do a test solve we'll fix the ends of the beam and what we're going to do is put a fixed constraint on a polygon vertex that aligns with where we had put our 1D mesh. So here you can sort of see it in blue uh, faintly there and we'll select a polygon vertex where the end of the edge that we meshed was. And we'll do both ends on both of the beams. All right, now that we've got our constraint, all we have to do is put a load in there. Let's define a gravity load going down uh, in the negative y direction. And we're ready to solve. All right, and here uh, it only takes a second to solve, and we can take a look at our results. First we'll look at our displacement results. And here we're just seeing the beam representation uh, as a stick. However, if you'd like to see a 3D representation, it's easy to do. We just edit the post view. And under the display tab, we have some beam display styles. And here we'll select the solid. And now we can tell which beam is which. We can also take a look at our stress results. Here we'll take a look at max principle. And we're currently looking at stress recovery point C. If we want to look at different stress recovery points, we can edit the post view under results and select a different one. And you can see we have different results for each of the beams depending on which stress recovery point we've selected. So maximum may have the most value. So that way we're looking at the maximum stress recovery point for each of the beams. And lastly, we can also animate the results. And that is Beam Meshing Basics.